Shall we begin? Why would a good God allow suffering to exist? Suffering to exist. Does God really exist? Really exist? Let's begin now. Why did God command the deaths of so many people in the Bible? People in the Bible. Why does God remain so hidden? Remain so hidden. Welcome to the third degree. My name is Sule Prince. I am here with Dr. Tony Costa and Gideon Levitin. Shalom. God bless you. Good to be together with you, brother. Gideon, we're so excited to have you here on the third degree. And we understand that you have a ministry to Jewish people and reaching them out with the gospel. And also you have a radio program. Can you just say a little bit about that website and the radio program you, you uh, come on? Yes, uh, uh, we have a ministry called the Holy Scriptures and Israel Bible Society of Canada. Our main purpose is to distribute the scriptures, but also teach the Bible uh, to both Jewish and non-Jewish individuals. We reach out, uh, especially uh, through the radio, through, through the Bible classes and the ministry meeting on Shabbat. So we are airing our uh, Bible teaching program on WDCX every morning at 5.30 and on Joy 1250 Radio every morning at 10.45 as well as in California in San Francisco. So we have various right. ways in which we teach the Word of God. And that WDCX is 99.5 FM. Yes. yes. And your website, what is your website for your ministry? It's www.holyscripturesandisrael.com. Very good. So, Gideon, you are a Jew who believes in Jesus or Yeshua. Yes. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, think that how can a Jewish person believe in Jesus? Uh, Jews uh, don't believe in Jesus. They're, they follow Judaism. So can you tell us, Gideon, how you as a Jew came to know uh, this Jesus of Nazareth as the Messiah of Israel? Yes, it's true that the vast uh, majority of our people do not follow Yeshua, Jesus, uh, the Messiah. But I don't think it is. it ought to be strange because Yeshua, Jesus, was a Jewish man, was born in the land of Israel to the Virgin Miriam. He had ministered among our people in the land of Israel. And we are just simply by reading the scripture have discovered that he was truly our Messiah. And therefore, as a response to what we heard, we simply responded. I, uh, by the grace of God, uh, uh, somehow the Lord, through my wife, uh, spoke to my heart through the Word of God, and I realized that Yeshua indeed is the promised Messiah of our people, and if I was a sinner who need forgiveness, I wanted to accept Him into my heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your wife, is she Jewish? Or? No, my wife is a Christian who was born and raised in Canada. She went to Israel to volunteer on a kibbutz in 1973. Mm. Then I was uh, drafted to the Israeli military. I was a soldier for three years in the Israeli army. And uh, when my wife Irene, then my girlfriend, shared with me the gospel, initially... I did not accept it because we Jews don't believe in a Messiah, in Jesus. But once I came to Canada after my three years military service, I have uh, been exposed further to the gospel and eventually realized that uh, he is truly Israel's Messiah and I came to faith in Yeshua the Messiah. Wonderful. So how does the Jewish community respond to you? Well, they look at us, of course as people who have gone astray. You know, we, as the nation of Israel, obviously, uh, do not believe yet that Yeshua, that Jesus is the Messiah. So obviously they look at us as, as Jews who have gone astray, who have fallen by the wayside, who believe in this one man called Yeshua, called Jesus, uh, not recognizing that he was the eternal Son of God, who became a man, and suffered for the sin of the nation and the nations of the world. Mm -hmm. It is said 
but uh, uh, that our people do not accept him, but uh, they look at me definitely as one that have gone astray. Mm. I was just thinking from what the Bible says in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul talks about how the Gentiles would provoke the Jews to jealousy. And I think a little bit, I see a little bit of that in your wife. Is that true? That yes. As a Gentile, she yes. provoked you to jealousy. Here, here, my wife Irene, but when I came to Canada in 1976, after I finished my military service in Israel, there were other Christians who really loved the Jewish people and recognized, listen, that Jesus, the Messiah that they believe in, is a Jewish the Messiah, the promised Messiah of Israel. They became believers. They received forgiveness of sins. So they had love for Israel, love for us Jewish people. And many prayed for me. I have heard, even before I became a believer, that the many brethren in our local assembly in Niagara on the Lake were praying for my salvation. And others have... Uh, 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 had burden for us, shared with me the gospel, showed me the love of God, which touched my heart and brought me to know Yeshua the Messiah. And I think it'd be fair to say, wouldn't it, that if Jesus or Yeshua is truly the Messiah of Israel, then the most Jewish thing you can do is believe in the Messiah. Exactly. Since the Messiah comes from Israel. Exactly. In fact, I honestly can say that, that in light of what the Bible say, that the wrong of not accepting the Messiah Jesus is done by my people rather than by us who are Jewish believers mm -hmm. in Yeshua the Messiah. Paul said in Romans 11, 5, even in these days, there is a remnant, remnant of Israel, according to election of right. grace, right. which are today are truly believers in the, in the God of Israel yes. and the Messiah himself. Yes. So let's jump into a question. Um, why is it that the Jews reject Jesus as the Messiah? It's a very, very good question. First of all, uh, I understand from Scripture that in the plan of God, God knew that blindness will happen to the people of Israel, that Israel as a nation at the first coming of the Messiah will not accept him. In fact, Isaiah said that in Isaiah 53, that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, but the Lord laid upon him the iniquities of us all. So it was predicted in the scripture that Israel as a nation will not accept the Messiah at his first coming. But at the same time, it does say that uh, eventually Israel will accept him. So in the plan of God, I really understand that, uh, uh, that Israel did not accept it because of the fact that God knew this and predicted this ahead of time. But on the other hand, is Israel's hardness of heart. Israel, the vast majority of our people, Israel, do not see that uh, they need uh, this Jesus, this Yeshua, as their Messiah and Savior. And that's why they have hardened their hearts. They couldn't see. Mm -hmm. They expected a king, and accepted one that will come, will deliver them from problems. But before he become the king of Israel, he has to be the one that will suffer for the sin of the nation. Right. And we're talking about getting right with God. And the most holiest day in, in the Jewish calendar is Yom Kippur, as you know, the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. And so God said in the Torah, in Leviticus 17.11, that God said, I've given you the blood to make yes. atonement yes. on the altar for you. Yes. And God laid down the rule through Moshe, Moses, that that it is the blood that makes atonement. And so we know that the temple, the second temple, has been destroyed by the Romans in, in, in AD 70 or 70 CE. And so our Jewish friends today come to God on Yom Kippur with no sacrifice, no blood. Um, how do they have their sins forgiven today without the blood of the sacrifice? Well, uh, first of all, we know that without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sins. In other words, a Jew or a Gentile, in every generation, if he or she will receive forgiveness of sins, they must accept the Messiah, they must accept the sacrifice. So Israel today, they try to keep Shabbat, they seek to keep the holidays, they seek to, uh, to do good deeds, mitzvot, as we say it in Hebrew, but something is missing. As you mentioned, uh, 586 BC, the first temple was destroyed. 
70 AD, the second temple was destroyed. There is no priesthood. There is no sacrifices. There is no altar. There is no temple. And therefore, there is no forgiveness of sins. Even though you can do all the good works that you want, in order to receive forgiveness from a holy God, one must accept the price that the Lamb of God paid, Yeshua the Messiah, when he died on the Roman cross. Amen. Well, Gideon, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. That was very enlightening. Yes, yes. May the Lord help us. May the Lord, uh, uh, we pray for our own people that they will understand that the Messiah, Yeshua, has come, and that his name is Yeshua, and he loved them, and you want them to turn to him. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you see, please press the subscribe button right below. And beside that is the bell icon. If you want to receive all of our notifications of everything that we do, press that icon as well. Thank you.